in many cases, customers start with an off-the-shelf, but in the end effect, we will design something usually very specifically tailored to the use case of our customers. And in many cases, that means that we have to uh, optimize their energy consumption. Hello, IPXers. We are at, as you know, the Things Conference. We're going to be talking about wireless connectivity, which is what this company specializes in. So we're at a show that's specializing in LoRaWAN. It's all about how you connect your project, whether it be in a smart building or be in transportation or wherever it is. And Lilian's company specializes in wireless connectivity. So tell us how you help your customers deal with wireless connectivity. So as already mentioned, our company is all about adding wireless technology and by adding wireless technology to existing to uh, technology, we can reduce our customers' total cost of ownership and we can help them generate new revenue streams. So a typical customer of us would have a core expertise, for example, in some sensor technology, but they wouldn't have any experience in RF design. What we will provide is them a very... So that might be typically a metering company? For example, that could be... Uh, actually, that's a quite big field for us, metering. Right. And something... Just give some other application examples, because we can, you, you can go deep dive, but our, our watchers have to know specifically whether or not you're relevant to them. So specifically, where do you know your wireless connectivity has added value and given wireless uh, connectivity to an application? So there are so many, but smart cities... Top three. Smart, top three. Top three. Right now, smart city. We see a lot of business also in smart, uh, smart agriculture. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. And uh, industry 4.0. Right, okay. Let's go with smart agriculture. Okay. That's a cool place. So where do you sit? Because that would have been, been a place where there wouldn't have been connectivity in the past. There yes. wouldn't have been scenarios where you would have been collecting data and using it to make what you're doing better. So let's just go with agriculture and give me an example of what you would do. You don't need to give an example of a customer. Just, just give an example of an application where you've taken sensing data and you've added wireless connectivity and how you've done that. Yes, so a typical use case would be something as simple as soil monitoring. Right, With excellent. soil monitoring, you can ensure the quality of the soil, make sure that, the, that you won't lose any yield. And of course, with soil monitoring, you can also prevent fires. So it can also be predictive maintenance in many cases, and it can be done all with one sensor and one wireless connectivity. Yeah, so let's just take that idea of predictive maintenance. At the moment, you would you would send somebody out to go and get that data, okay? Because that's how you'd get that data. Exactly. So what you don't want to do is send somebody out to do that. You want to just get that data off that box into the cloud somewhere. So what's the starting point for that discussion? So the important factor why you'd want to use wireless technologies is the OPEX. We've seen many use cases where they would actually go in person, so they have to send some skilled stuff to do these measurements, write them down in an Excel sheet or a piece of paper. Imagine how much OPEX you can save just by putting there this wireless box or the, uh, the full sensor, and all the data will literally come for almost free with just a little fee of maybe the, the network transmission. Yeah, so you can help save them with their operation costs. Yes. So do you do that by making their electronic system better or giving them an off-the-shelf system? We can offer both. In many cases, customers start with an off-the-shelf, but in the end effect, we will design something usually very specifically tailored to the use case of our customers. And in many cases, that means that we have to uh, optimize their energy consumption because these are battery operated devices, or of course we can use ambient energy harvesting. And that again will reduce their OPEX by not having to go and replace the batteries. Yeah, so there's both the, 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 the whole idea of human being cost, but also energy cost. Exactly, exactly. Right, right. So at starting point, I don't, I, I currently today, am not an IOT, uh, in an IoT scenario. I'm currently not connected to the cloud. I'm currently not remotely getting my data out of my system. What's the starting point? What, where do you start? Because you've got some, mm -hmm. you've got some modules here, yes. and then you've got an off-the-shelf solution. So, yes. so for the customer, just try and explain to me, let's say the top three questions that you ask in order to know are, you, are we more likely to go down the module route or are we more likely to go down the buy off the shelf route? So the first question we ask to our customers is uh, 
to really identify the business pro uh, problem and to give us an idea about the volume. Because the, vo the volume of the devices will determine whether it makes sense to invest more in CAPEX, in something a bit more customized to later save OPEX, or whether it makes more sense to go with something off the shelf. Right, so it's the business proposition first. It's the business proposition. So, so you're not, you don't start from an engineering point, you start from the operating and business point. We actually had a little bit, uh, you're right, you're right, we, we had a bit of a shift there. We used to be very technology driven, but over the last few years, we have learned that just proving the technology is not enough. Many projects died in the pilot. That's why we moved more towards a business driven approach, trying to help our customers to identify the proper approach to their business problem first. Right, okay. So you work out the, uh, the volumes of the application. So how much does it cost to send somebody? How much does it cost to maintain it? How much energy might it be using? Once you've done that, what's the next technology? What's the, what's the two, let's just say, two questions that you then try to solve from a technological point of view? How does that process work? So a really important information that we will need is how much data will you need for, for your application in order for the business model to work. In some cases, that will be enough to send once a day. In some cases, we will need a lot, a lot of data. And based on that, we will give you a technical proposition how to solve your problem efficiently. Right. So it's on the, it's on the frequency. It's on the free, not as in RF. But as in the frequency yes, in the, of taking the data. Yes, yes. So, so if you're asking the system to do a question, so, so that's very interesting. And at what point, so, so if the frequency is more than once a day, are you more likely to go to a module? Or if the frequency is once a week, are you more likely to go for an off-the-shelf solution? Is that the way that that works? So that's more whether we go for an off-the-shelf or for something very custom. So we can also build an entire uh, device for our customers. That really depends on the volume. The data, the amount of data will determine which, uh, which technology we will use. So we are trying to understand from a business and the technical perspective how we can solve it efficiently and then we will give you a proposal how to solve it technically. Right, right. so it's very difficult to, so in, the answer to that is it's very difficult to give that technology answer because every application is different. Every application is different and it's really important also for us to educate our customers. Usually the customer comes and they want to solve everything. But in some cases, it doesn't make sense to solve everything. It makes sense to solve the right thing in an efficient way. Right, I understand, I understand. Okay, good. So in terms of your starting an IoT project, business first. Yes, yes, we have seen that in the last year. I would be for technology first out of like personal interest, but if we don't take the business first, then the pilots don't scale and then there is also no, no yeah. business for no one in there, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so Lillian has given us an, uh, an in in introduction to her company, but just as an interesting aside, um, we've been doing quite a few interviews in this whole IoT uh, infrastructure debate discussion. And it's very interesting because what we're discovering is people are talking less about technology and they're talking more about business. So when you're a design engineer and you're trying to solve these problems, you naturally, you know, looking around IP Exchange, you're going to naturally look for solutions technologically. But the advice probably from the industry is work out your business scenario first and then go looking at your technological solution second. 100%. That's, that's the value or the learning that we took out of all the customer use cases in the past few years. And we at Miramico believe that it's the only way to, to really scale up an IoT project or initiative. Very good. Thank you, Lilian. Very Thank lovely you. to meet you. Thank lovely you for to meet you as well. Thank you. Are you with my engineers, sir? Eh?